This is Hadi Lisha, interventional cardiovascular specialist, going over a carotid angiography technique from a right radial artery access in type 2 to 3 aortic arch. There are some basic principles for carotid angiography technique that are very important to minimize uh, complications. Number one, using reverse curved catheters comes in very handy from a radial access. Uh, secondly, it's extremely important to watch for air bubbles during the aspiration and flushing uh, process even more than coronary technique. Thirdly, catheter movements have to be slow to minimize plaque disruption. And finally, we try to minimize our time in the aortic arch as much as possible. In this case, a Simmons 1 reverse uh, curved catheter is uh, shaped in the descending aorta, then is pulled back while being rotated clockwise to try to engage the left subclavian artery. Notice the slow movement, the puffs one, once in a while, and uh, the uh, minute uh, details of the catheter engagement. We get a left subclavian angiography, which obviously reveals a severe proximal left subclavian artery stenosis, which is uh, causing a slow flow in the anterograde vertebral artery and kind of uh, uh, subclavian steel physiology with intermittent transient reversal of flow from the vertebral artery. Uh, it's important to take uh, the angiogram of the entire cervical course of the vertebral artery. Then moving on from the left subclavian to the left common carotid artery in a type two or type three aortic arch, notice that the catheter is being pushed so that the catheter disengages in a paradoxical fashion. And notice that the catheter is now free in the aortic arch, at which point we rotate clockwise in this uh, situation, depending on the catheter position, small puffs. Um, and you notice here that the catheter is going to engage the left carotid artery upon clockwise rotation without that much uh, push. And obviously, anterior-posterior projection of the uh, left common carotid angiography is performed. And then the left anterior oblique projection showing evidence of a severe osteo-left external carotid artery stenosis. Uh, then the intracranial angiogram component, uh, very important. Um, and uh, middle cerebral, anterior cerebral artery without crossover, as well as lateral projection of the intracerebral carotid angiogram. Notice the diffusely decreased distal flow consistent with small vessel disease. At this point, uh, the reverse curved catheter is also extremely helpful. Uh, it's going to realize almost like a figure of eight shape. By pulling it back, uh, we can take an innominate artery angiogram, at which point the catheter is pulled back while being rotated to engage the right common uh, carotid artery, which is uh, imaged in the anterior uh, posterior projection, then right anterior oblique projection. Uh, and no significant stenoses are visualized at the site of the previous endarterectomy, then intracerebral angiography and anterior posterior town's view, then lateral projection um, for completeness of the uh, cerebral angiography. Then finally, uh, right subclavian angiography is very important to visualize the right vertebral artery flow. You notice here right to left vertebral crossover consistent with left subclavian steel syndrome.